In this lesson, we'll be tracing a complex edge with multi-axis contour. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use multi-axis contour. Let's take a look at our next multi-axis toolpath by selecting multi-axis contour. The first thing that we need to do is select an appropriate tool. We're going to start by selecting our local library and creating a new tool. We're going to change the end type to tapered. We're going to set the end diameter to one millimeter, the corner radius to 0.5. We're going to set the body length to 30, the overall length to 40, the shaft diameter to five millimeters, the shoulder length to 15, and the flute length to 10. This will give us a very stable tool and allow us to get into that corner. We then want to go to our contour selection. We want to select this edge right here, but notice that automatically it's selecting the entire loop. If we select the edge again, we can change it to just an open contour and select the green plus arrow to add our selection. We're going to leave our default heights and we're going to leave all of our default settings for passes, but I want to make note that our minimum and maximum tilts are 0 and 180 degrees. Let's go ahead and say OK and see what toolpath calculates. So everything here looks good. Let's go ahead and select Setup 2 and simulate all of our operations. We'll step through our adaptive clearing, our pattern of the pencil mill. We want to go to our swarf operation, and then we can play through. So you can see that the tool comes in here and it clears out that corner for us and leaves a really nice finish. Now, obviously at this point, we haven't done any finishing work around the hub or on the top of the propeller, but this toolpath is going all the way down to where our original material is. If we change our stock to be transparent, we can see the underlying geometry and how we're cutting down to that. I do want to make one more note about this toolpath. Let's go ahead and right click to edit. And at the bottom of our tool tab, we have a shaft and holder selection. In here, we can add additional clearance around the shaft and the holder to ensure that we're not going to intersect any stock or other geometry. We can also set it to detect tool length, which will automatically extend the tool if that can avoid a collision, or we can have it fail on a collision. In our case, we didn't have a collision, but if we go in and modify our parameters such as our minimum tilt angle and make that something like 75 degrees, we could potentially get into a situation where we are going to contact part of the propeller blade. So notice it gives us a caution and tells us that it's not able to calculate it because the tool would need to be leaned over in order to hit that axis. But again, the settings for shaft and holder allow you to add that additional clearance if you run into a situation where you have a collision with the holder or the tool itself. Let's go ahead and save this and move on to our next step. 